Okay, here we go. So we're going to practice using the distance formula, which we should know by now, um, to calculate a missing coordinate. And I have this drawing here because what I'm going to do in this problem is I'm going to give you one coordinate and I'm going to give you a distance, okay? And then I'm going to give you one part of the other coordinate, like an x-coordinate or a y-coordinate. So in our final answer, we're going to get two solutions. And I'll go back to this drawing, and this is what these two solutions kind of represent. Okay, so let's start with the example here. I say, okay, I've got a line segment that is a square root of 74 meters from this point here. And the other end of the segment has coordinates something two. All right, find what that x coordinate would be. I didn't, I didn't put x, I put a. Um, and you'll see why I wrote this as a square root instead of an actual number. All right, well, first of all, I guess, I guess we'll just start with the distance formula. What is that distance formula? The difference in the x-coordinates squared plus the difference in the y-coordinates squared. Okay? Of course, that's derived from Pythagoras. Well, here, we're just going to substitute everything that we know. My distance is square root of 74, and these represent x1, x1, y1, and x2, y2. So I'm going to say, uh, okay, I'll make this really long here. My two x coordinates are, I guess I'll do the a first. I'll say a minus 3 squared, okay, plus my two y coordinates, 2 minus a negative 5 squared. Kind of made that square root symbol too long. And what that equals is the distance, which I wrote as square root of 74. Now, of course, if this was just a normal number without the square root, you, you'd just write that number there. Okay, uh, next up, we'll simplify all of this and see what happens. A minus 3 squared, uh, this is an expanding thing, isn't it? This is, this is a minus 3 times a minus 3, which gives me a squared minus 6a plus 9. That's that, that foil thing, first outside, inside, last. Okay, so that's a, a, a trick right there, I guess. So I get a squared minus 6a plus 9, plus... That gives me 7 squared. 7 squared is 49. Still equaling square root of 74. Okay, I can still clean this up a little bit more. I'm making my square root signs a little bit too long. And I get a squared minus 6a. Uh, 9 and 49 give me 58. giving me square root of 74. And now, if I have the square root symbol on both sides, what can I do to get rid of them? What's the opposite of, what's the opposite of square rooting? I'll just square both sides, and squaring eliminates the square root symbol because they're opposite operations. So that cleans things up quite nicely, and I set up into solving a quadratic. So I get a squared minus 6a plus 58 equals 74. And from here, it's almost easy street. So for solving a quadratic, set it equal to 0. And let's see if it factorizes. Set it equal to 0. So a squared minus 6a plus 58 minus 74 gives me 0. And 58 minus 74, running out of space here a squared minus 6a, 58 minus 74 gives me minus 16 equals 0. And for this guy, I think that factorizes uh, what multiplies to get negative 16 and adds to get to negative 6. I think I've got a case there. I think it's 8 and 2 somehow. I think the 8 will be negative. So that's a 
minus 8, and the 2 will be positive. A plus 2 equals 0. Does that check? Negative 8 plus 2 is negative 6, and negative 8 times 2 is negative 16. Yep. Okay, so I know my solutions for A can be either positive 8, just solving a factorized quadratic, or it can be a negative 2. Now, of course, I can get two different solutions because for that distance, back to my drawing right here, that right th there's, the, there's the level. Okay, that's where y equals 2. And I'll get two different values. One, one can be 8, and the other one would be negative 2, both with that, that distance there. Um, now, of course, if it doesn't factorize, if it doesn't factorize, we'd, what would we do? We could use quadratic formula. This guy, negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. But fortunately, this one factorizes, and we're all good. All right, so that's, that's how we do those types of problems, and that's why we get two solutions, and if it doesn't factorize, we'll have to go the, the real way. Okay, well, that's, that's it. Now for some more practice. What do you think?